So here's Isaiah the prophet, and what's interesting about Isaiah is he's not only going to give the message of God to the people, but in that passage that we read, we have a very special glimpse, as it were, of how God spoke to him. Now, we don't always hear about how the prophets received the message from God, but here we do. And the prophet Isaiah, he has a vision. He sees God. He sees God high and exalted. That means high and lifted up. So it's not like he's looking down at God. He's looking up at God. And there are angels in the passage. They're known as seraphim, and they're flying around. So as <coughs> Isaiah is there, suddenly he starts to get this vision <laughs> of God. He gets this vision of God, and he thinks... He starts to see what's going on. Now, when you see God, is it like, oh yeah, there, there's God high high on the throne and, and, and the angels are all flying. Yeah, I've seen that a hundred times. No. How does he feel when he sees that? Shocked. Shocked is a good word. How else does he see it? Amazed. Amazed. These are all good words, aren't they? He's, his mind is blown, okay? He can't believe what he is seeing. And as he starts to realise what he's looking at, he thinks, this is God. I'm looking at God. Imagine looking at God, if you can. I, I can't even imagine what that must be like. What do you think you'd be looking at? Um, how, how would it feel? A light. A light. A light. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be a light as well. Guess and I think it. the light would be very, very powerful. So here's the light. I think what it is, the light is so powerful that he needs to perhaps put his hand up to protect himself from it. But it's not just his eyes that are affected. He says in his vision, the whole temple was starting to shake and, and he can smell the incense and he can hear the angels singing. And it's like all of his senses are being affected. Every part of him, it's like a whole body experience. How do you think he feels Shocked, when amazed, he looks surprised. at God? Surprised, scared. Why would he be scared, Kaya? Um, because he knows he's very powerful. Well, I think he is scared. He is terrified. Because, do you know what the Bible says about what it means to see God? That if you were to see God, you would die. If you really saw what God was like, you wouldn't be able to live. And so Isaiah, seeing God, he's thinking, this isn't good. I shouldn't be seeing God. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, Jonathan? He feels unworthy and he says, woe is me, woe unto me, I am ruined or mm. I am undone. It means I'm falling apart here, I shouldn't be looking at God and I'm realising what a sinner I am. It's showing him his sin. He says, I am a man of unclean lips, living in a people who are unclean. I'm a sinful man whose speech is sinful, living among sinful people. Mm. What's he doing? He's confessing his sin. He's not, he's blurting it out. He's saying, now I've seen God, I realise what a sinner I am, and I'm going to confess my sins. Does God strike him down? No. no, he doesn't. Now that's interesting, because he's expecting it. What happens? An angel, one of the seraphim, is flying around, flies over to an altar, and on the altar there is a flame, there is a fire burning, and the fire is burning with coals. Now, the angel uses the tongs, but then he puts it in his hand, and this is a live coal. And now a live coal means a piece of coal that's on fire, that's burning. What does the angel do with this piece of coal? Give it to Isaiah's lips. He puts it to Isaiah's lips. He touches the lips. Now, lips and that whole area is very sensitive. You imagine something burning being put on your lips. Well, this is why we know it's a vision. So the angel touches his lips, and he says, your guilt is taken away, your sin is atoned for. Now, atoned for means it's been paid. Who has taken Isaiah's guilt away? Who? Jesus. Jesus. Now, what's weird about that? Jonathan. Jesus hasn't died on the cross yet. <laughs> he hasn't died on the cross yet. Isn't that weird? He hasn't died on the cross yet. But no one else takes sin away. Nobody else takes our guilt away. If somebody has atoned for sin, it's been paid for, but nobody else paid for sin except Jesus. And so what Isaiah is receiving, he's receiving the forgiveness of his sins even before Jesus has died, which reminds us that Jesus doesn't just die for the people who came after Jesus, mm -hmm. he died for all the people who came before. 
Now we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. Isaiah didn't know who Jesus was particularly, but what is he doing here that gets him a forgiveness? What is he doing? Telling the truth. He's telling the truth, but he's doing something else very important. He's confessing. Yes. He's Good. confessing his Good sins, job. Kaya. He's confessing his sins, and the Bible says, if we confess our sins, mm. God is just and faithful to be able to forgive us our sins. And why does God need to do this for him? Well, the answer is simple, because God has a job for him to do, but he can't do the job Isaiah can't do the job until he's ready. And the only way to become ready is to be forgiven his sins. And now he can start to serve God. And God says, okay, who will go for us? Now, what does that mean? That means who's going to go out and do the job I want them to do? And so he says, let me be the one. Yes, Lord, I want to be the one who goes for you. We know. might think, oh, I'm, I can never serve God because I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm a bad person. Well, God says, have you asked for your sins to be forgiven? And if we say, well, yeah, I've done that. I, I believed in Jesus. I believed that what he did on the cross paid for my sins. And God says, well, if you've done that and if you've meant it, he says, I am calling you in the same way. Now, we may not end up doing the same job that Isaiah did, but God is calling people not just to salvation, to become part of his family. He's calling us to serve him and to work for him. And he's looking for people who are available, who are confessing their sins, and who are faithful so that we might serve him as well.